Hi, I'm Brad, for now. A few weeks ago, there was a new product that was being teased on a website that was basically aiming to make this headset, the Valve Index, wireless. Cut the cable, as people like to say. When I first saw it, I was a little skeptical, not really due to the fact that I didn't believe that the product couldn't be made, it was just the fact that the Index is so late in its price or life cycle that I thought a expensive upgrade to such a device would not be warranted at this point in time. When you are in a position like I am, it's sometimes good to be very critical and honest because there tends to be very critical and honest things that happen in this industry. However, the people that were releasing this device, and they're known as NoFio, actually saw me kind of skeptical about it and decided they wanted to invite me out to try it themselves. They've been flying all over the world to let a lot of different content creators and VR journalist websites get a chance to see what their experience is like. So I did get to try out the NoFio, at least one of their prototypes of their wireless 6E Wi-Fi 6E adapter for the Valve Index. I want to note right off the bat, I was not paid to make this first impressions video, but they did cover my air travel from Orlando to Miami, a 30 minute flight, which is much better than a three hour drive. Trust me, Florida drivers. Woo. Right off the bat, I just want to say that the experience I had was quite surprising. We'll talk about the price and really the logistics of this device coming to market and whether I think it is a sound investment, at least from the experience I've tried, but the experience was overall very pleasant. The best thing about this demo was the people that were there. One of them was clearly very involved in the engineering process and was able to answer a lot of my technical questions that I had about their product. In fact, not only that, they had a suite of tools that unfortunately I could not record or did not record some of them that shown off exactly what was going on and how well their device were performing under the conditions that we were set in. They reserved a sort of photo studio in kind of the middle of nowhere and there was some interference I wouldn't touch up on in just a little bit. But overall, the experience was very good, and the actual software that allowed them to debug everything and see the actual latency per frame sent there and back was actually visible in their software. The one thing that was most interesting to me during the demo was the fact that they were actually doing a foveated sort of uh, display, static foveation, where the highest quality image that is sent back and forth between the router and the actual adapter, the center of the image would be most clear and everything as you go out farther around the edges would be less clear or, or, or more uh, less data sent for those edges. And it was really impressive that they were able to pull up an overlay to show that um, within the actual headset itself. It was a really cool image that unfortunately, again, I could not record, but I didn't actually notice the foveation until they turned it on. In terms of the actual latency, the latency was very good. So I've been very experienced with trying a lot of different wireless PC VR systems, all the way from the wireless 5 wireless adapter to a Quest 2 with all the best Wi-Fi 6 router and setup that I could possibly get. And I would say this uh, Wi-Fi 6E NoFio adapter is way closer to the Vive wireless adapter that a lot of people love to use, and a lot of, kind of a big reason people still use the HTC Vive Pro. However, the one thing I really want to note about the Vive wireless adapter compared to the system that NoFio is using is basically the Vive wireless adapter has never been a good option for me because it would overheat constantly and that would kind of even limit the actual playtime even though that the actual playtime for the battery would be around two hours which is the same for the NoFio kits. The engineer told me that the main reason why the Vive wireless adapter overheats so much is because uh, wireless gig or Y gig requires both active chips and antennas. And that requires a lot of cooling because everything uh, that I just said does give off a considerable amount of heat. And unfortunately, when you are using the Vive wireless adapter, especially with the Vive Pro 2, for example, you're actually uh, sending a lot of data back and forth, which gives a lot more heat because of all the data being sent. So with the Vive wireless adapter's uh, improper cooling, because it was originally designed for the original HTC Vive, not the Pro or Pro 2, um, a lot of those issues come up. But NoFio uses Wi-Fi 6E, which does not require power to the antennas. And even when uh, the engineer even took off the actual 3D printed uh, antenna plate and just showed me how simple these chips were. There's a very thin wire with the actual Wi-Fi 6E antenna. And yeah, a lot less cooling needed. 
And going back to the latency thing, I actually did not feel there was any latency difference from perceivable between a wireless uh, adapter from the Vive and the NoFio adapter. I was very skeptical of all this hype around Wi-Fi 6E for high-end VR devices. Again, I was kind of big on the wireless gig 2 possibly coming to some devices, but that has not happened as of yet. And while Wi-Fi 6E is still kind of a new technology you're going to see a lot this fall, it's just basically a lot of the same bandwidth that uh, Wi-Fi 6 has, but they have lost a lot of different things going on there, especially using the 6 gigahertz band is really the big difference between it and Wi-Fi 6. But my experience, at least for the Valve Index, was very good. The compression was unnoticeable, except if you looked very, very closely, and even then it was super difficult. I did some stress testing, because a lot of times when they're doing sort of like these compression, uh, encoding, and decoding, dark areas, very similar to some YouTube videos you might see online that are poorly encoded and decoded, I did some more very dark areas where I would switch back and forth quickly between light and dark, light and dark, to stress test if I could see any visual artifacting from the compression or their sort of codec algorithm. Nofio is using a proprietary codec, and they're also using some specially made ships from their parent company. But again, I did not notice a difference, and it was pretty impressive to me, and I'm a lot more hopeful for the Wi-Fi 6E standard altogether. I guess that kind of comes down to what I really feel about the system in general, is if this is a $400 kit that is going to release uh, maybe at the beginning of next year is what I was told, it's very difficult to understand whether this Nofio upgrade for a $1,000 full kit Valve Index is going to be that much better than a lot of higher end headsets like Cambria, which is rumored to be also including its Wi-Fi 6E chip on board. Will Wi-Fi 6E scale to higher resolutions is one of my bigger problems, and I think Nofio is realizing that, yes, they could possibly scale their actual uh, adapter and router to other headsets, but they told me right now they are focusing on the Valve Index to show that we can do this and this is how we're going to do it. The system's also more useful for PC users in general than the Vive Wireless Adapter, because another issue with that system is all your decoding and encoding would be happening directly on your PC, and with the system that they built for Nofio, that's actually all being done with their two router and the actual adapter on the headset. So that's actually less uh, actual kind of processing your actual main PC will do. If you can get better overhead for any VR game, that's always a plus because some people don't always have that system that can power these heavily powerful games. And of course, you don't have to put a actual PCIe in to the actual motherboard itself like the Viworld's adapter. Uh, basically, all they do is you plug in a display port and a USB port with some power. In fact, you can even use the actual Trident cable that comes with your Valve Index and it works. You also don't need any special third-party software. You just need to plug it in. The driver automatically installs for their no-file router to your PC and it will work directly with SteamVR, no issues. But there were some issues that I ran into, and really it was just one that kind of made my experience uh, a little unfortunate. And they said they are going to be able to do some auto uh, aggregation things to fix this issue. But again, my environment was probably not the ideal environment actually, because there was a lot of giant uh, radio antennas on the building that we were demoing the device in. And every five seconds, and it was literally every five seconds, even the graph that they showed on the PC that I couldn't record, uh, would show that big spike in latency every five seconds due to some sort of what they believed to be was interference with the, the six gigahertz band. And it's really unfortunate because I was kind of watching other YouTubers who also tried the NoFio kit and everything, and they weren't having anything like that. So unfortunately, I was the one that had this issue. All that would happen during this, it wouldn't drop the entire, uh, it wouldn't go black or anything, but it would basically be like a dropped freeze frame every five seconds for like a, a few milliseconds. That was notable enough for me to report it. And yeah, very unfortunate little, uh, little, little dent in the armor of the NoFio kit. But for every time that it was actually working 100%, it was again, it felt like what using a wireless index felt like. There are also a few other things I think we should know um, in terms of weight and like power delivery and everything. Basically, they plan to get two hours of battery life per uh, battery that you plug in directly to the headset itself. And the actual uh, unit I was using on my head, they were, it was basically a stackable dev kit 
which had three boards stacked on top of each other, and they only planned to actually half the actual weight of that device on the back of my head, which looks very bulky in videos and pictures compared to the final product. And again, the way they're doing that is it's not going to be a dev kit, it's just going to have one standardized board, which makes everything else a lot more slim. The coolest thing that we got to do, and they don't promise this will be the case for final delivery, and I was talking to some workers at Tundra Labs who are making the Tundra trackers uh, for full body tracking, for example. Um, just for fun, we kind of plugged in a Tundra Super dongle into the frunk to see if it would still communicate all the trackers dongles wirelessly with, my, with the PC they were using. And by the way, they were only using a laptop with a, uh, a mobile version of 3080. I know it's still a high-end uh, GPU, but it's a laptop version. They were powering all of this, but it actually still worked. I was I was technically able to still do full-body tracking with the Super Dongle t plugged into the front and just communicating wirelessly. Now, again, I, I wouldn't recommend people do that, especially for the higher-end uh, Super Dongles, because those things heat up quite a bit, and I don't even think Tundra Labs wants people using those directly in the front or the frunk anymore to begin with but it was still cool to stress test another feature because that frunk will technically work for a matter of things cameras do not work though that camera data that you would maybe use for pass through or anything like that that is currently off the table for this kit so now i want to talk a little bit about logistics i was getting very happy with a lot of the answers they were giving me um this company did feel like they came out of nowhere but to be honest they actually are kind of uh, owned by a larger company that makes the chips and they're mostly just involved with the uh, software processes and like the codecs and everything and of course taking that, uh, that, that those chips that their parent company makes and making it into a VR device. They have a lot of backing behind them and they even bought a lot of parts so when they actually do release their first series of uh, chips or, 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 or kits um, they've reserved that so they can just ship out as soon as they can. Of course, I've heard that before for Kickstarter type things, and while I do trust this company is knowing what they're doing, and I think it's very transparent of them to travel to all over the world just to give people demos, I still am a little weary of Kickstarters in this day and age. Um, I, I've always been like that, though. They plan to launch, actually, in the last week of August is what they told me, which is basically this week. Uh, their Kickstarter, and they will do an early bird special for uh, under $400, a little bit of a discount is what they told me. Um, but again, they're trying to target that $400 price point that includes everything you need to make a Valve Index wireless. And that is pretty expensive. I mean, I'm sure that that, that was the one thing I was really surprised about this thing coming out three years, um, a little bit more than three years after this headset's uh, life cycle has been through. But really, I, when I was kind of saying online that I was going to test this thing out, a lot of people were messaging me with a lot of interest, which surprised me. I tend to not actually know the interest of people or viewers, um, so it's always great when people message me and say, yeah, I'm interested in this because it gives me a lot more hope. And the people that seem to be most interested in this system are, of course, the people that are very into social VR, like VR chat. And when I posted some online tweets and videos, you can see here when I'm using full body tracking and doing some this crazy movements back and forth, running around a giant space wirelessly, uh, the people that are going to adopt this the most are probably going to be just high end social VR users, like dancers even. I, I, I know a lot of dancers who are full time in VR chat and do it for sort of a, not living, but you know, they, they, it's a, a big serious thing for them. I can see them wanting this kit for sure, and it will work great for them. But the price for the average user, I mean, if it was me and I really had to shell out $400 for a Kickstarter project that is planned to release in quarter one, quarter two of next year, possibly, um, and this is a device that I have owned since the first day of launch, and I have a, you know, I have a pretty fair sized space, but I'm still at the point where I'm used to the cable enough where I don't really feel like I need to breathe new life into my index by making it wireless, to be honest. Um, they did say that they might give me a, uh, a early production model of the final version later this year so I can do my own testing in my own space. But for, ma for now, for me, uh, I'm okay with the wire, to be honest. Um, but I do see a lot of people will want this, um, especially if they fix that issue with the interference that caused that five second issue in my actual space. Maybe in a few months when a lot of higher end headsets start actually releasing with Wi-Fi 6E chips, we can do some comparisons of how they actually manage their codecs and how the compression is for these systems. 
but I will say I was impressed with the NoFile system when I tried it. Anyway, that is all I have for my first impressions. Um, if you have any questions about NoFio, um, definitely ask the comments. I will eventually read them and hopefully answer anything that I can answer. Um, it's not a matter of that I can't or can. It's just a matter of did I try this when I went there for a few hours or, or whatever. But yeah, um, if you like this video, please like it and uh, subscribe and hit the bell. It will help me a lot. And I also want to thank all my Patreons. Patreons? Patrons. There are $25 plus per month right here. But if you do not spend $25 a month, I am also just thankful of your support. Things are ramping up very fast in this channel, and you'll see that within the next month of really terms of hardware reviews. And uh, yeah, it's getting pretty exciting. And I hope you all have a great day until my next video. I have a couple videos coming out. Wait for it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a hint to what my video is coming out soonish. Wait for it. Ah, oh, God.